Hello, it's Willow here. Uh, I am on location at an undisclosed location in Saskatchewan. Um, I've recently come back to visit my home province and I have to say that I am absolutely shocked and fairly horrified by the warp speed <laughs> by which the oil industry um, is developing in this area. And the thing that's primarily freaking me out right now is the utter wasteland of oil flares that has been created in this area, in this entire area of the province. Um, and, uh, you know, I've written on the blog before about, um, you know, about my beliefs about oil flares that it's not healthy for people to be living close to oil flares. Uh, oil flares have been associated with everything from stillbirths to miscarriages to birth defects to cancer to, uh, you know, heavy metals poisoning, benzene poisoning, those types of things. Uh, so, you know, we're in a situation where people in rural areas are sort of being uh, swept aside, pushed aside. The interests uh, of these communities are being pushed aside in favor of the oil industry. And of course, we are in the thick of the Pluto and Capricorn years. Uh, so toxic industry, right? P Pluto relates to toxicity and po poisons and Capricorn relates to industry and business and government and our structures. Toxic industry is, you know, omnipresent. Uh, there are millions of examples of industry creating either toxic products or toxic waste products and then not responsibly, you know, dealing with, uh, with uh, those products or, or, or waste products. And in the, with the oil industry, I would probably argue that, that they both create a toxic product and also toxic waste products. Now, the situation with these oil flares is that they're taking basically the easy way out uh, uh, because the, the, the gases that these oil flares are burning off could be uh, piped underground and could be captured. And I believe uh, they can actually be used for other purposes. So these, these gases do, you know, could have a sort of um, end game purpose. But instead what they're doing is they are just burning these gases and emitting them into the atmosphere um, all you know all around this area like I say they it's if you drive in this area at night and I'm gonna try to get some some nighttime shots um, it literally looks post-apocalyptic um, you just see these orange glows everywhere you know everywhere going on and um, you know the difficulty in this area I think is that uh, the oil industry really is God in a lot of respects there are so many people reliant on the oil industry. There's so many people employed with the oil industry. And when you have a job with oil money, it's like inflated money. Okay. So basically the quote unquote good paying jobs are oil jobs, right? Because oil is an inflated commodity, right? Um, so you have what I see as uh, uh, the oil industry sort of preying on the working class, right? People who have had to work damn hard just to survive in the world and so they're willing to you know offer up a piece of their land um, to put one of these you know one of these uh, uh, wells batteries oil flares whatever combination of the the three on their land uh, because they're paid a little bit of money every year to get that right and that money comes in handy and that money might be the the difference between having a comfortable financial life and have, having to, you know, struggle and stress and scrape together every cent. So, um, you know, the scenario is that wealthy people would not be offering up their land for this type of industry because they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have the need for that money, right? That money wouldn't be enticing. What they would prefer, obviously, would be to have, a you know, a nice natural piece of land without a toxic oil flare, you know, burning away 24-7, 365 days of the year, you know, indefinitely into the future, uh, potentially causing, you know, all kinds of, of health damage. So we're, we're in a situation that, again, has a class element to it, right? Uh, the other element, because God, because uh, oil is God in this uh, area in so many respects, 
people are afraid to actually speak their mind about the the potential dangers of these things and the the potential dangers of like this industry in general um and people will fight you tooth and nail if you do bring up any of this stuff um even my own father (laughs) fights me tooth and nail on this subject um i recently uh went to take some some photographs of uh, of a flare and i was told i was reprimanded i was told uh that it was private property and not to publish any of the photos that i had taken so you know This is the situation, right, where they don't want anyone really knowing about what they're doing. They don't want anyone questioning what they're doing. They don't want any type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, public awareness of the potential dangers of what's going on. Okay, so um, this is about a quarter mile from where my parents live. And as you see, we've got the oil well the oil flare and the battery. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see that flare uh, flaring away right there, but it is definitely, uh, it's just a small a small one, but it's uh, definitely burning off some, some gases there. Uh, and the, the really crazy thing about this location, now it's, it's not great that this is a quarter mile away from my parents' house, obviously, and a quarter mile from my neighbor's house as well, about equidistant, um, but when they were first staking this off, they were staking it off directly across the road from my parents' house. Literally like 60 or, it would have been 60 or 80 feet from my parents' house. Uh, no concept of, you know, disrupting someone's entire life, their, their you know, their whole, uh, you know, value of their real estate. Um, one of the great things about my parents' house is that It has this uh, big living room window and you can see this sort of wide expanse of prairie and you can see a beautiful sunset every night with some trees and you know. Uh, So that would have been completely and utterly ruined by this, right? So my dad actually had to, you know, request that they they move this thing. but that's that's kind of the mentality of the oil industry, you know. It's it's like it has no concept of what it's doing to people. It's just a, a constant race, you know, a race to get this stuff into the ground. This is about uh, less than a mile from my parents' house, and as you can see, again, we have we have uh, all this going on um, across this. Across the road, we have a big flare, big old flare. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Sorry, the sun is in my eyes right now, um, but it's uh, flaring away there. And you know, any any feel that this was a natural area uh, is is really gone. You know. Um, I used to love walking down these roads, these gravel roads. There was never any traffic and it was just, you know, this kind of wide expanse of prairie. And yeah, maybe it doesn't look so great right now because it's kind of wintry and whatnot, but you know, it, it was, uh, you know, it, you still got a little bit of a sense of, you know, the wildness of nature and just kind of being at one with nature. A little bit, right? I mean, it, it, was, it was disrupted before, don't get me wrong. But uh, this scenario, you know, has really, has really uh, altered the whole feel of the place. And then, of course, oh, sorry, the sun is totally in my eyes right now. I don't know if you're getting a look at that. Uh, we have these, we have these flares, and I'm, I'm, I, like I said, I'm going to try to get some nighttime shots of these because that's when you can really see them. You can really see this kind of crazy post-apocalyptic wasteland that's being created here uh which and i you know i laugh because what else can you do right oh there's some birdies going by um i'm not gonna go any closer to this flare unfortunately i'm not sure if you guys are really getting the full effect here uh just because i was reprimanded yesterday and i know how hmm yeah I know, I know the kind of intimidation and you know threats that can be used, uh, 
But I will say that um, you can smell the gas, you can smell the sour gas uh, being emitted here. It's, so I'm, I'm still a fair distance from this flare and it smells bad, people. It smells bad. Uh, you can smell it whether you're walking down the road, you can smell it whether you're driving down the road. I can also, I can also smell it being emitted from the, the previous flare that I, I showed you guys. Um, so you know that there's toxic stuff being released into the atmosphere here. Uh, and you know, again, <laughs> let's just say that a wealthy person would not be allowing this on their land. Um, uh, but the, the problem is that with landowners, if you don't agree to it, they'll just go across the road to your neighbor. And so you'll still have the same oil industry come into town, only you won't be getting any financial compensation for it, right? So that's the way that they, ha they have people, is that, you know, this is all sort of, uh, there, there are a bunch of people who own land in this area, and, you know, literally they'll just go, go to the next guy and, and, and get permission there. Um, but, you know, I cannot imagine a person in the city uh, seeing an oil flare anywhere in the vicinity of a home and deciding to buy that home, you know? Oh, look, honey, granite countertops, a renovated basement, and a big old oil flare right across the road. You know, it just, it just would not compute, right? These spoiled yuppies, <laughs> they don't have any idea, right? They don't have any clue about... Uh, about what people, you know, about what people's houses are really uh, being subjected to these days. So this is literally just a, a quick snapshot of what's going on along my parents' road. So this is all within a mile radius of my parents' house. And like I said, this is going on in this entire area. So this is not, definitely not an isolated area. Uh, this is going on literally everywhere uh, in this this area of Saskatchewan and you know really across the prairies. And then this is the last little bit of excitement they got going on here. Um, you can see more action along with some moo cows just doing their thing. Um, I definitely also worry about the health of the animals being around these flares and being around this oil industry. Um, like I say, you can smell, you can literally smell the, the toxic gases that are emitting from this area. And so, you know, if, when you have one in the area, you know, that's not great. But when there's these clusters of, uh, you know, multiple wells, multiple batteries, multiple flares, it's just honestly it's terrifying it's really terrifying what's going on um and you know you really i really get a sense of desperation from the oil industry you know a real sort of and when people get desperate they get mean and they get underhanded and you know they're willing to do anything to kind of continue and that's kind of the sense i get with the oil industry right now um and you know i i don't fault uh, the people that are working in the oil industry you know, so much, maybe, maybe a little bit, but, but, you know, these are people who just need jobs, you know, they, they need to be able to make a, a decent living. And unfortunately, oil is one of the, the best ways to make money in this area. Um, you know, ra ranching and farming is, a heck of a lot you know it's very hard work and it's it's not generally um, as lucrative anywhere near as lucrative as an oil job right a lot of people are forced to work oil jobs to support their family farms and family ranches because they can't make a full living producing food for people which is really kind of sad you know that uh, <laughs> you can't you can't make a living producing food but you can make a living by creating this, right? And by putting oil flares in that are dotting the landscape. Uh, literally at night, it looks like some kind of, I don't know, dystopian birthday cake. Like it's there, it's like these orange, toxic orange candles <laughs> that are just burning everywhere. Like I said, I'm gonna try to get some nighttime 
shots as well uh, to, to show some of, some of what's going on. And you know, there is danger to making a video like this uh, because like I said, um, you know, the oil industry doesn't want people questioning what they're doing. And I do question it. I question, you know, there was a man uh, named Weibo Ludwig in the 90s who associated uh, sour gas wells near his house um, with stillbirths and miscarriages and deformities and, and things of that nature. And, you know, he, he took to eco-terrorism, basically, to, to deal with it. Uh, I'm not suggesting that that's a, a, a good way to go or that that's, um, you know, really going to do all that much, to be quite honest. Uh, I, I don't know what the answer is, <laughs> but I know that more of this is not the answer. I'm not sure if you guys can see, but you know, here's here are animals just out here, none the wiser, you know, grazing, and there's an oil flare in the background, um, and there's there's cattle grazing around all these oil flares out here. So, you know, it's a human health concern, and I think also an animal health concern. So I said I would try to get some nighttime shots of this flare and this is it. Just flaring away there. This is again about a quarter mile from my parents house. Um, and yeah. These are dotting the landscape. This is just one of dozens that are in this immediate area. Um, hundreds, probably thousands. You can see a nice moon up there. Capricorn moon heading to a conjunction to Pluto. So it's sort of apropos that we're talking about uh, this situation right now. And then if you turn to the other side, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but those two little lights there, uh, those are more flares in the night. Um, that I believe is a rig. So that would be, you know, more of the same industry. So you probably can't get the full effect here, but you know, this is, like I said, there's these orange glows, these weird alien orange glows all over the darn place. And it's, it's very sort of post-apocalyptic looking. Now we are back to uh, just a little bit south of my parents' house. This is the big oil flare that I took a, took video of earlier today. Again, you can just see it, you know what I mean? Lit up like nothing here. Very creepy. <laughs> um, I can count at least six flares from where I am right now. Um, nope, that's not another one, sorry. There's a couple over here. You can see a rig off to the left that um, whitish light is a rig. Um, then we'll take a scan to the left and uh, we have we have uh, some of those are some of those are yard lights but you can see the flickering orange those are fl flickering orange right in the center there those are flares um, anything that's orange and flickery is, a, is, a, is an oil flare. Um, they're not all showing up at this exact moment, but like I said, I can see about six um, in addition to this big one that I'm filming in this area. So like I said, the entire area is clustered with these things um, and so one oil flare in an area you know 
is sort of bad enough, but maybe not cause for a huge concern. But these are literally just, this area is just thick with it. Absolutely thick with these flares. Uh, and there's just more and more oil activity. There's a rig going up there right now. So there's just more, more and more oil activity going on. And there's our lovely Capricorn moon yet again. And I will pan over here just to give you guys a little bit closer look. Um, if you can see it, it's, it's a little bit tricky, but that's another oil well right there. Uh, sorry, uh, drilling rig right there. And if you pan over here, there's another rig there. Um, and I believe that is a flare down there. Um, so, you know, there's also other flare some of the, again some of these are other lights but if you see the flickering that's likely a flare um, so you can see just again absolutely choked with the stuff and then just quickly there's a little bit closer look at this drilling rig here um, secondary rig over there. That secondary rig may be a service rig. I'm not too sure. Um, I'm not a huge expert on the, the, you know, ins and outs of what's going on. Um, but yeah, whole lot of action going on. And then this is that giant oil flare. Um, and I know you can't see it super great right now. It's, you know, in the distance, but this is literally from my parents' backyard. Uh, so you have that huge oil flare burning off toxic gases into the surrounding area. And, you know, I know the oil industry claims that, you know, there's, there's nothing, you know, it's gonna have no effect on people. Um, but as I've mentioned in previous articles, uh, there's a there's a really high incidence of cancer and fatigue issues and other disorders in this area. And I can't imagine that having all of these open oil flares, um, you know, putting toxic stuff out into the the surrounding area is going to have a good effect on that. Um, it's one of those things, you know, it's a lot like radioactive fallout where you can't necessarily link these things conclusively to what's going on, but I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to piece two and two together as far as what's going on. So anyway, none of this uh, post-apocalyptic oil flare wasteland activity is anything new. Let's just put that on the record. It's been going on for decades now, but it's literally, this area is literally being choked with these uh, flares which are producing, you know, which are burning off poisonous toxic gases into the air, into the atmosphere. Um, you can smell it. You can smell it, as I said, when you're walking down a road, when you're driving down a road, um, there's this foul kind of smell, you know, that kind of rotten egg smell or whatever smell uh, emanates from it. And you know that is just not healthy stuff to be breathing in, right? But because these are rural areas, there aren't a lot of voters here. Uh, most people here are working class or, you know, kind of, you know, they, they, they may have kind of clawed their way up to middle class, but but it's, it's a struggle, right? It's a lot of hard work day in, day out. Um, and th this is what's going on, is that, um, you know, these things are emitting toxic <laughs> waste from the oil industry. The oil industry is um, 
uh, more than capable of piping this stuff underground uh, so that it doesn't have to be burned off into the open air. Uh, but of course that costs more money, requires more infrastructure. Um, ultimately, I believe that we need to get out of the fossil fuels industry, we need to get out of the nuclear industry because these energy sources are killing us. Uh, I think that we have the technology or we could easily put the best scientific minds together to create the technology to provide free, clean energy that each individual can have access to, right, and can control on their own. Um, there's, you know, there's a huge amount of research that's been done on suppressed energy technologies. And what I believe is happening is that we're, you know, the, the solutions aren't coming forward because the powers that be are just trying to milk these old, uh, you know, industries. They're basically dry humping these industries for every last cent that they can get out of them. Uh, oil and nuclear being two of the, you know, biggest offenders as far as toxic products, toxic waste, and just, um, you know, devastation to people's health and to people's lives. So always, I would say, keep in mind that these, um, these free energy technologies are here on Earth. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, creating enough momentum to bring them about. We also don't need a green energy uh, agenda that is controlled by these same powers that be, okay? And that's, that's sort of what they're, uh, what they're looking towards is the transition into green energy, but then green energy that's of course controlled by these same, these same players, you know, and uh, kept out of the hands of people so that people can sort of, you know, independently have access to energy. Um, you know, we're coming into a time, we're, we're coming into some, some strong Aquarius. Uh, um, after we get through this uh, Saturn-Pluto con conjunction in Capricorn uh, over the next few years, which is going to be a little, you know, ha it's going to have its bleak moments. We're coming into some strong Aquarius. And these ideas can start to come forward. This, uh, all of these suppressed technologies, you know, people can start to share ideas and share resources and... You know, I, I really do think that it's only a matter of time. We just have to see through these control mechanisms and understand that whether they're schlepping toxic oil, toxic nuclear, or, or clean green energy, um, if it comes from a, from a control mechanism, if it comes from a top-down scenario, um, like we currently have, a hierarchical scenario that we currently have, it's not going to be the, the answer. So anyway, um, signing off from uh, beautiful, the beautiful prairies, uh, made, made much less beautiful, unfortunately, by, uh, by what the oil industry is, is doing here.